this is probably my favorite time of year. Not just because we get Christmas, maybe Hanukkah for some of you, or whatever other December holiday there is. Don't come at me. I'm just a boy from America. I, I don't know what the other ones are. <laughs> because we always get the Game Awards. Bow, wow, wow, wow. Game nominees. Bow. Cue cool music here that I'm probably not going to edit in. Bow. <laughs> what am I doing? But yes, so like every mainstream gaming YouTuber, I'm going to be doing my nominees for the game of the year. I'm not going to live stream the game awards or anything like that. I'm probably not even going to talk about them after this video besides what gets announced at them because really that's the only thing I care about. I don't care about who wins game of the year. I don't care about who wins best music. I don't care about who wins really anything simply because I, I just don't. If you don't know, there's a very interesting history with the game awards where sometimes the games that win don't necessarily deserve it. So in this video, I'm just gonna basically run down every nomination category and we're gonna go through and I'm gonna tell you the ones that I think should win based on my own personal experience because I've played a lot of games this year and just in general in my life. I've been playing games since I could speak English and that's what I go by. But I'm gonna vote on the nominees that I think are going to win. So I'm gonna tell you what I think deserves to win and if I think a game that is not that one is going to win, that's the one I'm gonna vote for. All right, let's let's um, let's get started here. Look at this, look at this little moving screen right here. It's so cute, it's so cool. It just looks like a little goober. Look at him go, he's just zooming in and out. They really think they're the Oscars and it's really funny. Oh, so we're starting off big. I, I was gonna try to do this in reverse order, but we're starting with the biggest one, game of the year. And by starting, I mean, we're not gonna look at this one until the last second, because I didn't I didn't want to do that one first. Okay, so we're gonna go in the reverse order here. So the first one is best esports event. Now, a lot of people in my position would skip this one because they are just playing games. They're not really looking at esports. I'm actually a huge esports fan and it's not even that i really watch every single esport because i'm a fan of csgo or fighting games or dota 2 or anything like that it's because i literally just like the event and for me i think the best one is always the world championship for league of legends just because i mean it's one of the most historic ones i think dota 2 is always really good the valorant one was probably the best one of this year just because of the story behind evil geniuses and them actually rising from being the worst team in north america to winning everything so i'm gonna vote for that one and i think that's the one that should win um but really it could go to any of these and again i, I don't really don't really care all right so the next one is best esports coach um i don't know who any of these people are except for potter um but that's again because i know about valorant uh, i do not know the rest of these people so uh, i'm gonna vote for the bald guy because bald people need more love so i'm voting for remy and that's that's just what we're doing here best esports team mm, definitely not jd because they did not win everything i don't know the history of team vitality i don't think they win, won the other majors i don't know Fnatic was winning everything but then just lost in the world championships and kind of fluttered i really don't want to vote for evil geniuses because they have a very interesting history as an esports organization and are one of the prime problems with gaming in general uh so we're gonna do if we were in europe i it would be so easy to be team vitality i don't know i'm just gonna fucking vote for that i don't care oh my god how many of these are actual <laughs> this is what i mean when i the game awards has a very interesting history uh it's obviously faker if you vote for anyone else then i don't think you watch esports so sick of voting for esports it's been literally three minutes and the best one out of all of these is easily counter-strike and it's not even close Dang. oh who are these people i actually know no one i think this is the first time in 
game of the year history that I don't know who content creator of the year is. I could like at least I don't know at least one name in this category. I know Cypher PK. Okay, I lied. I do know who that is because I've heard of him before. Um, I think he made Call of Duty videos in the past. I don't know. I thought that said Scream. And I was going to lose my mind. I, I would have. I would have lost it. I'm not voting for this. I'm just going to vote for Cypher because he's the GOAT I, and to someone, not, not to me. Okay, so most anticipated game. We're finally getting to the things I actually care about. So we have Final Fantasy Rebirth. We have Hades 2, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Star Wars Outlaws, and Tekken 8. Now, there's a certain, a certain game... certain game from a certain franchise that isn't on here and, and I just can't I just can't put my finger on it I really I don't know maybe you guys can let me know in the comments but in all seriousness I think for me it would be Hades 2 because the first Hades was just that good and it was just such like a revolutionary game I really think Final Fantasy is probably gonna win i think it's the most majority i honestly though for me personally this is gonna be a hot take i'm actually more excited for two of these games over final fantasy rebirth but that's because i got yelled at when i said i didn't play tekken in my street fighter review um because of course out of all the videos that went kind of popular it was that one so we're gonna vote for final fantasy so i don't get hunted. All right, so best adaptation, we have Castlevania, Gran Turismo, The Last of Us, the Super Mario Bros. movie, and Twisted Metal. And I know there were people giving Twisted Metal hate, and I won't stand for it because you did not watch the show. This show was actually really good. <laughs> I'm also just a huge Anthony Mac Mackie fan, so I mean, that could have been it. Um, I think he deserves to be in more, but I think... <laughs> I mean, it's obviously it's not going to be Gran Turismo. It's not going to be Castlevania, even though it's a really good show. And if you haven't watched it, you definitely should. Uh, I definitely not going to be Twisted Metal, even though I want to vote for it. Um, it's going to be between Super Mario Bros. movie and The Last of Us. I think the Super Mario Bros. movie should win um, just because of the amount of money it brought in and how it kind of re-kicked the start of video game adaptations for the year obviously the last of us and all these movies were planned before the super mario bros movie came out but no one i think expected this movie to be as successful as it was um i think just with the cast and the people behind it and things like that i'm not sure that people thought that illumination would do such a good job even though i personally did not really like enjoy it like there just wasn't really anything there for me to enjoy but uh, i'm gonna vote for the last of us because i think it should win and i think that the playstation bias um from jeff is gonna help influence <laughs> this one even though i think it could really go between the two i just realized my neighbors could hear me making this video that's okay they're old it doesn't matter <laughs> all right so best multiplayer game we have Baldur's gate 3 party animals street fighter 6 and super mario bros wonder now for me personally i want to vote for street fighter 6 because i really never had any issues with the multiplayer um i mean diablo's multiplayer is as good as it gets because it works um Baldur's gate 3 same thing it worked really well uh party animals is really fun for like a multiplayer game and super mario bros wonder they fixed they finally if you didn't play the game multiplayer they got rid of a absolutely needing somebody to be next to you so you can do online multiplayer but then at the same time you don't have the typical like mario running into each other or like taking the other person's abilities or anything like that so the multiplayer in super mario bros wonder was really good for finally um i really think it's going to be between party animals and boulders gate 3 uh i want to vote for street fighter 6 for my own personal bias uh, but i think boulders gate 3 is just going to sweep every category that it's in uh so i'm going to give it to that one why is this why is this a category does, does anybody play these games I even know fifa changed their name I forgot that the F1 games were real. If it wasn't for Gran Turismo, I would really forget that any racing game is even real. Um, I know that the first Hot Wheels game was really successful. I honestly think this game's only on here because I think only three racing games came out this year. Uh, I only know Forza. I'm gonna give it to Forza, throw Xbox a little bone here. <laughs> All right, best sim strategy, best game focused on real turn 
or turn-based simulation. So we have Advanced Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, City Shitlines 2, Company of Heroes 3, Fire Emblem Engage, and Pikmin 4. Pikmin being on here is weird. I, I guess I guess it is a strategy game. I didn't really feel that way. The game is really easy, too, so I really wouldn't say it's best strategy. It's a great game, though. If you haven't played Pikmin 4, if you've played other Pikmin games, you'll love it. I think it's easily one of my favorite ones in the franchise. Um, Fire Emblem Engage is so good so 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 good um advanced wars one and two it's a remake i i don't think it should really win um again just because it is a remake i have not played company of a company of heroes three and if city skylines two wins um that's pretty disappointing because it came out in a really bad state and i'm pretty sure the pc port isn't even out by the time i'm recording this video so i'm gonna personally just give it to fire emblem but this is one I actually want to know in the comments. If you have the best sim strategy game, go ahead and put it on here. I, I don't, I don't know. All right, so best family, we have Disney Illusion Island, Party Animals, Pik Pikmin 4, Sonic Superstars, and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Now I knew Mario was going to be in this category to begin with. Um, I think Disney Illusion Island is actually a really good game to put in this category. It's actually a really fun platformer to play with uh, family members or a loved one. Again, Party Animals is a really good pick. Really any of these could pick. I wish more people talked about Sonic superstars i don't think enough people are for it to really win so i'm just going to give it to super mario bros wonder because duh, it's, it's a nintendo game <laughs> best fighting god of rock mortal kombat 1 nickelodeon all-star brawls 2 pocket bravery and street fighter 6 really it's between all-stars brawl 2 and street fighter 6 for me now if you watch my video on mortal kombat 1 um if you haven't you can I didn't really like that game. I didn't love it. I think that the fighting itself felt great, but there was just a lot that I didn't like about the game. And if I think about just the fighting in all of these games, because I've played all of these except for Pocket Bravery, it's really between Street Fighter Six and All-Star Brawl 2. All-Star Brawl 2 is really good. Like it's, 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 it's gotta be, I might do a video on All-Star Brawl 2 because it literally changed my entire perception of what a Smash, Smash clone could be. Cause I think it actually does things better than Smash in certain aspects. Um, but I'm gonna go for Street Fighter 6 because I just like that game a lot. One of my favorite games of the year. Um, and I think the fighting was just done really well. All right, best RPG, Lives of P. My goats. I've got a nomination. This is my favorite game of the year, by the way. I'm just saying that now. I'm going to talk about it in the last category. Sea of Stars, uh, Starfield, Final Fantasy, and then Boulder's Gate 3. Mm, I really think Boulder's Gate 3, like I said, is going to sweep every category. Lives of P is great. Final Fantasy is fantastic. Starfield is a game. This might be the category they actually just kind of throw xbox a bone here but it does say including massively multiplayer experiences so i'm going to say boulder gate 3 is going to win and i'm sorry sea of stars i wish you could win this category because for me i think it's a it's i don't want to say it's a better rpg i almost said that it's not i think boulder gates 3 is a better rpg but i just enjoyed sea of stars more <laughs> all right best action adventure we have alan wake 2 marvel spider-man 2 resident evil 4 jedi survivor and tears of the kingdom i'm glad the jedi survivor got something on here i think it's just a great game uh i do forget that it came out this year and i'm glad that resident evil 4 remake is on here as well it's weird that remake isn't in the name um really for me this comes down to I don't know. Game Game Awards can be hard because it says for the best action adventure game combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. There was no puzzle solving in Marvel Spider-Man 2, let's be honest. But it does say combining combat with traversal and the traversal in this game is easily the best traversal I think we've ever had in a game ever. Um, however, I will say I think that in terms of puzzle solving and combat i'm gonna give it to tears of the kingdom um just because i think that the fighting is really cool the combining styles um different being able to, to craft pretty much anything you want in the game to get around a puzzle is really its benefit here you could solve every puzzle in the game in a different way than somebody else did and i just think that again there's going to be some nintendo bias here because come on like 
come on let's be real with each other here uh and i think this one honestly i think this is just the best game on this list uh bar maybe alan wake 2 but uh we're gonna vote for this one i don't think alan wake 2 unfortunately is really gonna win much this year even though it should all right best action game we have armored core dead island 2 ghost runner 2 hi-fi rush and remnant 2 i have not played remnant 2 it is on game pass as a surprise launch so maybe my vote personally changes after that but really best action it's got to go to armored core that game was just so visually cool um it was a great action piece like it really just felt like you were playing an action like playing as an action figure when you're a kid that's the feeling i got dead island 2 is great ghost runner 2 is fantastic hi-fi rush my third favorite game of the year second or third favorite game of the year uh but armored core i think is just the best action game i i don't have a vr headset um so i'm just gonna go with this one um because i moved my face cam out of the way a little bit i'm sorry if that was annoying a uh, best mobile game best debut indie game we have cocoon dreads pizza tower venba and viewfinder did they get rid of dave the diver on here was this the category that Dave the Diver was in? I think it was because technically Dave the Diver did not come from an independent studio. It came from a multi-million dollar backed studio. Um, it wouldn't have won, in my opinion, anyway, because I don't think it's better than Cocoon or Dredge. Um, for me, it could be a lot of the, it could be, it could be between Cocoon, Dredge, and Viewfinder. Viewfinder, I think, is that the, is that the game? Is that the game about global warming? Because if it is, I think that game's definitely going to win. <laughs> I think it'll definitely win. Um, I think personally, I think Dredge just made such a big splash. It got physical copies in Japan and other countries. I think it was just such a huge surprise hit that I think it gets my vote. Um, but I, again, this is one of those categories where I'm not too sure. Oh, here we go. Best independent game. Mm. Here's Dave. Oh, Dave, you're stupid you're not winning this one for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system uh sea of stars i don't even need to explain it uh best game i played this year most fun game i played this year for me personally uh best art style just give it give it give it uh, a most fun game hold on that that's alan wake too but this game's so good please if you haven't played sea of stars just just turn the video off and go play it like i don't even know why you're watching this video just go play it just go play it. best community support we have recognizing a game for outstanding community support transparency and responsiveness including inclusive of social media activity and game updates and patches so boulders gate 3 if you did not know is still receiving free updates and has been the entire time destiny 2 is garbage uh final fantasy i think is still getting updates and no man's sky is obviously uh getting updates cyberpunk for me i feel like i want it to win because of everything the game has gone through and because the developers at cd project red really really deserve some recognition for not only being pretty transparent um again they lied when the game first came out they lied before the game came out about crunch um but they did kind of really step up and take the blame on the chin and just fix the game because if you have not played the game or even seen the new update that's coming out in a few uh, i think it's a few days now uh, they really really fix it and the dlc proves it so for me uh cyberpunk i love this game i really do i never hated it uh that's a video for a different day <laughs> all right best ongoing so awarded to a game for outstanding development like is this even why is this even needed it's gonna be fortnite like i don't even need to i don't need to explain it fortnite season one is awesome the next season looks really cool so i'm going for fortnite and that's it <laughs> games for impact we have a space for the unbound chance of sonar goodbye volcano eye chia terranil and venba i've played two of these games um being chia and goodbye volcano high so i'm gonna say thought-provoking game with pro social i don't know maybe it's a space for the unbound i don't know what this means pro social meaning or message just gonna, we're just gonna give it to goodbye I, because i'm 
leaving this category. <laughs> All right, so next up we have innovation in accessibility. Obviously, this is recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed on a more wider audience. This could be pretty much like three of these. Um, Marvel Spider-Man 2 had great accessibility options as do most main PlayStation titles now. I think f mm, Street Fighter 6 could win this one just because of how accessible it made the game to new people um, because it was just really, really the best one of this category and adding a, a way to have the control set for newer players that I really appreciated as a newer fan. Uh, but I mean, this one could really go to either of these. I think I'm personally just going to vote for Street Fighter 6, but best performance. Okay, this is my hot take. I think that Cameron... Ben, Milani, Neil, and Yuri deserve it. <laughs> Everyone but Idris. No, I actually think uh, Idris Ilba could deserve it too. Um, I don't really think Cameron's, there's never a world I think where Cameron wins in this category. I think it's really gonna be between Yuri, Neil, and Ben, even though I think everybody on this list is super deserving. Um, I think, I know people are really rooting for Ben Starr here. I know a lot of people have said Neil. I'm gonna give it to Yuri because I think they're just gonna give it to him anyway. Um, he did do a lot with his like voice in the vo and his in, in the impact of his voice in Spider-Man 2 is really important and I think that him being symbiote Spider-Man is the best part of that game and a lot of it is because of what Yuri does so I'm going to give it to him okay this is when the categories start getting a little tricky here so try to keep up with me best audio design recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design I want to give it to Hi-Fi Rush because the entire game is literally based on its sound design. If it didn't have good in-game audio and good sound design, it would not be a game. Like the, that is literally the reason it is a game. However, I think that Alan Wake has the best sound design. It, this is so hard. I hate these. I hate the way they describe these. I want to give it to. I'm gonna give it to to Hi-Fi Rush. I think it could really be Alan Wake 2. I, I just personally think that Hi-Fi Rush is the better in-game design, best score in music. See, this is what I need. <laughs> For outstanding music inclusive of score, original song, and or licensed soundtrack, all of these had really great music. Um, I want to give it to Hi-Fi Rush again, but I won't because I already gave it to, I gave it best audio, and this game is just fantastic anyway. Um, Tears of the Kingdom, the music was really good, was not as good as Breath of the Wild's music for sure. Uh, the Final Fantasy soundtrack was amazing. The Boulder's Gate was incredible. And Alan Wake's 2 is really good and my personal favorite. So I'm going to give it to Alan Wake because I think they're going to try to throw some games bones this year. But I mean, it really could just be Boulder's Gate 3 for everything. Best art direction for outstanding creative and or technical achievement and artistic. See, this for me outstanding creative and or technical achievement i think technically alan wake 2 is the most impressive game i've ever seen in my entire life um and i'm gonna give it this one um even though i think hi-fi rush obviously the art design it's it's one of the it's almost as important as the music in this game lives of p is gorgeous and it looks really good um tears of the kingdom looks almost identical to breath of the wild which is why i think a lot of people are, are up in arms that that game is in so many things um but i think everything that they added new and technical technically as well that they added new is really good um so for me it's actually between tears of the kingdom and alan wake 2 but i'm gonna give it to alan wake 2 again because it's my game of the year best narrative so for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game we have alan wake 2 boulders gate 3 phantom phantom liberty final fantasy and spider-man 2 if spider-man 2 wins this category creative creativity is dead like 100 all of these four games had a better story than spider-man 2 that's my hot take phantom liberty is a better story than spider-man 2 but 
I think for me, this is really between Alan Wake 2 and Baldur's Gate 3. Um, the only reason I'm not going to give it to Alan Wake 2, even though I think it is the best narrative, I think that Baldur's Gate 3 just had so many different narratives going on at the same time that were all really, really good that it just gives it a one up. I think everything about Alan Wake 2 was done perfectly, but there were so many side stories, so many things you could do differently and have a completely different experience in Baldur's Gate 3 than like let's say your best friend who's also playing the game i think it just deserves it for doing that much but i can see them giving it to alan wake 2 as like a here you go type kind of thing but best game direction awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design i don't even know what this means um awarded for outstanding creative vision okay again it's not going to be spider-man 2 i'm sorry insomniac i love you guys but no um I don't think it's Super Mario Bros. Wonder, even though I will agree that it deserves to be on the game of the year list. I just think it's the Wii. It's the... I liked it more than Spider-Man 2. <laughs> it's a little bit stronger or the same as Spider-Man 2 compared to the rest of them. So Tears of the Kingdom, for me, I think could win this one because of A, the Nintendo bias, but B, because of how much they actually changed. If you played the game, you know what I'm talking about. They have the Sky Islands, they have that underground map, but then the fact that you can just build everything and just completely play this game your own way really pushes it ahead of these two. Again, I, I think Boulder's Gate 3 could easily sweep this, and again, this is my opinion, so Boulder's Gate 3, I think, has a phenomenal game direction, um, but I think innovation in game direction and design i want to give it to alan wake 2 though because the game direct the game design is so incredible oh, fuck <laughs> i hate this i hate this i hate this i hate this uh eeny meeny miny mo yeah da you wanna know you're a long way to go eeny meeny miny mo oh well i give it out <laughs> okay game of the year oh no okay recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields i don't really understand why resident evil 4 is in here i understand why spider-man 2 is in here even though i don't think it should be i can understand why super mario bros wonder is in here but again you can replace this one with hi-fi rush and i would still like the list about the same um either replacing this one or spider-man 2 or resident evil really any of these three with hi-fi rush would be my personal choice um because either one of these could go or stay because they're in the same if gaming was like a t like a like a letter tier s would be alan week 2 Baldur's gate 3 tears of the kingdom a would be spider-man 2 resident evil 4 super mario bros wonder hi-fi rush hi-fi rush would be an s for me um so the fact that it's not on here is really annoying same with sea of stars i just think that game is so freaking good um so i'm not voting for any of those three but um for game of the year it's hard because for me personally i really want alan wake 2 to win I think it deserves it. I think the weight is so well explained in the game. It's so welcoming for new players. The game design, the sound design, the way it just is crazy to play. But I think Baldur's Gate 3 just deserves it a little more. And I don't even like the game more. I just think that it really deserves it for what it achieved for seemingly coming out of nowhere. Because although the Baldur's Gate community was very excited for this game, the people who had never experienced a Baldur's Gate game like myself had no clue what this game could bring to the table. And it absolutely smashed all expectations so i'm gonna give it to boulder G boulders gate 3 so that is it that's that's my game award <laughs> this is my outcome this is my inevitability this is what i think is going to win game of the year so i hope you guys enjoyed this style of video i don't know this is a super long video it's like 30 minutes long i'm gonna start editing this as soon as i can um but this is definitely my biggest video i think i've ever done on the channel so if you could make sure to drop a like on it also subscribe for more content if you have a different opinion than me for how the game awards is going to go let me know in the comment section just down below again this is not my game of the year my game of the year is a tie between Alan Wake 2 and Sea of Stars because I think both of those games are freaking amazing and I'm just not the biggest fan of Baldur's Gate 3 and that's maybe a hot take I, I don't know but I can recognize that it's probably the best game that came out this year um so I can put my own bias aside anyways thank you guys so much for watching if you missed the other videos that I've made go ahead and check them out somewhere on screen or in one of the cards wherever it is and I'll see you guys in the next